Welcome to episode three of Creo Parametric for SolidWorks users. And this is the first part of two parts on sketching. The good news is if you know how to sketch in SolidWorks, well, it shouldn't be that much of a challenge to create a sketch in Creo Parametric. In this video, we're going to cover four different aspects of sketching that you should know about. And the first one is starting a sketch. There are two different ways that you can do this. I recommend that you start off by selecting whatever flat planar surface or datum plane that you want to sketch on and then invoking the command. For example, let's say I want to sketch on this surface. I will click on it with the left mouse button. Now I get a mini toolbar that opens up and right here we have the command for creating a sketch. You can see from the tooltip that the keyboard shortcut is the letter S. You could also use the sketch command from the ribbon. Any of those three methods will then put you into sketch mode. So one thing to note about Creo Parametric is that sketching is a mode. It's not a tab that you have available in the ribbon at all times. I have the tab now because I started the sketch. You'll notice that we have various commands here for creating geometry and adding dimensions and constraints, setting up our entire sketch. But I am going to cancel out of here to show you the other method of starting a sketch, which I don't recommend. So again, I recommended picking the flat planar surface or datum plane first and then invoking the command. That is something that's called the object action workflow. You really don't need to know that, but the other way of starting a sketch is action object. You tell Creo Parametric what you want to do, and then you pick the object that you want to sketch on. So this time I'm gonna start off by clicking on the sketch command first. The reason I don't recommend this method is that it opens up this dialog box here, and this can be confusing to new users of Creo Parametric. About the only advantage of this dialog box is that if you go to the Properties tab, you have the ability to define cross-hatching for your sketch. But I'm gonna go back to the Placement tab. When you have this dialog box, the first thing that you're going to pick is the flat planar surface or datum plane that you want to use as the sketching plane. Let me pick the very same surface that I did before. And when I click on that, you'll notice now we have this other vertical reference highlighted in green. This is something that's called the orientation reference plane. This is stuff that you don't need to know. This dates back to how Pro Engineer used to work back in 2001 and earlier. It used to be a very regimented process for getting into sketch mode and for setting up your sketch. You had to define something called the orientation reference plane, which was some flat planar surface or datum plane that was perpendicular to your sketch plane that would face either the top, the bottom, the left or right of the computer screen. Also, if you take a look here, let me rotate the model slightly. There is a pink arrow here, which is the viewing direction. Are you going to be looking straight on at the sketching plane or from the other side? You could flip that. And this used to determine your initial orientation of the model when you went into sketch mode. It used to rotate the model so that your sketch plane was parallel to the computer screen and the orientation reference plane faced the direction that you specified and you had the viewing direction, but they changed it a bunch of years ago so that the model no longer reorients itself when you go into sketch mode. If you want to go to the sketch view, you can use this icon, but if I choose this icon over here, you'll notice that it rotated in all sorts of a weird direction because of how I had set up my sketch plane in that dialog box. And this can really end up confusing people when they're like, hey, why did my model reorient when I just wanted to look at the sketch plane, looking at it planar or parallel to the computer screen. Let me cancel out of here to show you the advantage of, again, just selecting the flat planar surface and then going into sketch mode. If I pick this surface and then click on the sketch button, I'm in sketch mode. Now, if I use the sketch view icon, hey, it reorients the model the way that I expect it to. So again, Take the easy way, just pick whatever surface you want to sketch on and then invoke the sketch command. All right, number two thing to discuss, 
sketch references. If you take a look in my graphics area, you can see that we have a couple of light blue dashed lines. Those are what are called sketch references. And this is another one of those things that was really explicit in previous versions of Pro Engineer. You had to define your sketch references up front. And so, what are sketch references? Well, let's say I go to sketch a rectangle. I'm just going to sketch a rectangle out in empty space. There are some locating dimensions, and the locating dimensions are made with respect to these sketch references. You can still use different dimensions if you want to dimension to something else, but by default, these things called weak dimensions, which I'll come back to in a couple minutes, these are made to your sketch references. Let me hit the undo button to get rid of that rectangle. If you want to get to your sketch references, there is a references command in the ribbon. Also, if you right mouse click and hold from the pop-up menu, you can open up the references dialog box. And I'll list the different references in here. If you want to use something else, you can pick those different things if you want. So for example, if I want to pick this surface to use as a reference instead, I can pick that. If I want to use, for whatever reason, this surface, I can pick that. And now we've got these additional blue dash lines on the computer screen. Let me close that and let me go back to my sketch view. And so now if I go to create geometry, hey, I could get that geometry dimension to some of the different entities instead. You'll notice now it's going to this blue dash line instead of this one over here. So again, these sketch references, this is something that's sort of in the background in SolidWorks in Creo Parametric, it's a little more upfront, but you really, really don't have to worry about those different things. Let me hit the undo button a couple of times, get rid of the additional sketch references that I made. And I'm gonna make my rectangle once again, just have some simple geometry in here. And once again, we have our locating dimensions from those sketch references, but still you can dimension to other things instead. If I go to the dimension command and I pick this line with the left mouse button and then this surface with the left mouse button and then middle mouse button to locate the dimension, well, I can specify the value that I want like 0.5 and I get a sketch reference located on that surface. If you have anything that is listed as a sketch reference and you don't actually dimension anything to it or use those different entities as a reference for locking geometry into, it'll automatically be removed from your list of sketch references. But the important thing to note is that Creo Parametric is going to automatically build this list of sketch references. Now I'm going to go into sketch references once more, talking about the third aspect I want to cover in this video, and that deals with creating geometry. If you take a look in the middle of the ribbon, here we have a number of different commands that are available to us for creating lines and rectangles and circles and arcs. And for the most part, you have pretty much everything that you have in SOLIDWORKS here, although there are a few differences. If you're looking for the convert entities command in SOLIDWORKS, that is called project in Creo Parametric. I'm going to choose project. I'm gonna rotate my model slightly and just reduce the number of picks that I need to do. I'm gonna choose the loop command and then just pick a surface and let me make sure I'm getting the right loop that I want. Yep, that's what I want. Let me click the accept button. So now I've got all those different entities from those surfaces or from that surface converted into lines and arcs for me to use in my sketch. Let me close this for a moment. I'm going to go to my sketch references dialog box and you'll notice that now all those different edges are added to my list of sketch references. Also, if I was sketching a line and I wanted it to lock into a surface or an edge, that would automatically get added to my list of sketch references as well. So again, that's all you need to know about sketch references. But continuing on our discussion of geometry, Another command that I want to mention, in SOLIDWORKS you have the polygon command. 
Well, in Creole Parametric, if you go to the palette command, it's going to open up a dialog box. And one of the tabs that you have in here are different polygons, everything from three sides, a triangle, up to a 20 sided icosagon. I don't know if that's how you say it. You can barely see the 20 sides in there. Here we have the dodecagon, the nonagon. Hey, let's go to a hexagon. If I like that, hey, let's go ahead and just drop it on the screen here and we can grab the scale and make it bigger. Let me just hit the check mark to accept that size polygon. But again, you don't have an explicit polygon command, but if you go to the palette, there are multiple different tabs of shapes that you can use. A few things that you're not going to have in Creo Parametric. There is no 3D sketch. You would do that in a different manner. Also, you don't have things like the three-point arc or slot. You also do not have linear or circle patterns in sketch mode. You would create a feature in Creo Parametric. You would pattern it as a feature, not as an entity in the sketch. So again, just want to mention that there are some differences in terms of geometry. And the final aspect that I want to talk about in this video is the notion of weak dimensions. You'll notice as I was creating geometry, I was automatically getting dimensions on the computer screen. That's probably one of the biggest differences between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, and one of the biggest adjustments for me when I started using SOLIDWORKS after coming from Pro Engineer. In SOLIDWORKS, all your entities, your ge geometric entities, are going to be in a light blue color until they're fully dimensioned or they have relations added to them. In Creole Parametric, you are just going to get these suggestions of dimensions that you can use, and these are called weak dimensions. If I double click on a weak dimension and change the value, that makes the dimension strong. You'll notice that it appears in a different color than the weak dimensions. In this particular case, I have an option turned on that also locks the dimensions. And so here we have this dimension over here. Similarly, if I change this value, then it is going to change its color. It's no longer going to be a weak dimension. If I add in a different dimension, then that is going to end up making some of these different weak dimensions go away. So for example, let me create a dimension from this entity to this entity over here, and then middle mouse button, and let's change that to a value of 2.5, and let me hit the middle mouse button to get out of dimension creation mode. Now, one of my weak dimensions went away, and here I have a strong dimension. So rather than having to add dimensions and relations until all the entities in my sketch turn black, you're going to have these weak dimensions, and you know that your sketch is fully constrained when you have no more weak dimensions visible in your sketch, like this weak dimension over here or this weak dimension over there. So I actually really like how Creo Parametric gives you this suggestion of a dimensioning scheme, and then you can make sure that you have the dimensioning scheme that you want. And so those are the four different things that I wanted to cover in this video. If you want to get out of sketch mode, here we have the green check mark that says OK. You can also get to that from the right mouse button and hit the check mark. So there you have it. Four things to know about sketching in Creo Parametric compared to SOLIDWORKS.